Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a good time at home, self-isolating and being safe and staying safe and staying home. Um, I am home and I've decided to spend some of my time, you know, catching up with a few friends and colleagues. Um, and so yes, I'll be, you know, doing a few interviews. Um, so today my interview is with Cameron Bailey, the artistic director and co-head of the Toronto International Film Festival. Enjoy. Yeah, so, um, so she said to me, you know, just go, you know, just go online and just I thought, go online and do what exactly am I supposed to do? <laughs> because I am so sort of, my brain just doesn't work when it comes to the technicalities of mm. any of these things. I can barely just about use my phone. Um, <laughs> well, I'm learning. I'm going to have to learn. This is the new world. Yes, we all have to DIY now, right? It's like we're all our own camera operators and I'm tech happy. people. I'm this, I have no crew, I have no one, I'm doing this all by myself, so wow. I hope that I don't mess it up. But you're looking well. <laughs> Thank you, you too, you too. I'm in, actually in my wife's office, at home office at, uh, at home okay. in Toronto, and I've been here, you know, for the last, what, three weeks, I think, just <laughs> doing meetings uh, every day. Yeah. It's a weird thing to get used to. I can imagine. I'm in London at the moment. My daughter mm -hmm. had a, um, a few weeks ago, so oh, I'm grandma. Nice. Yes. Congratulations. So I'm, I'm doing some grandma duties. Um, uh -huh. I got back from Lagos, I had to self-isolate. So I'm mm. the self-isolation today. Um, so from tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to see the baby from tomorrow onwards. No. Um, yeah, it's, it's an entirely new world, Cameron, that we find ourselves yeah. in. And I just thought, let me take this time to catch up with a few friends and colleagues and mm -hmm. just get their view on what's mm -hmm. going on at the moment. So... Sure. COVID-19, do you think it took us all by surprise? I mean, in terms of what is your view on how this thing, who saw it coming? Yeah, you know, it did take us by surprise, but it really shouldn't have when you think about it, right? We know viruses exist. They, we, we deal with them every year with the flu virus and other things as well. Uh, and we know that bad viruses can can kind of just spring up and well, Ebola being the one of the worst examples recently. So uh, that's out there, right? We should all know this already. And I think one, one thing that I, I do see having happened is when we first began reading the reports out of China, I think a lot of us outside of China felt like, oh, that's something that just is in China, right? And we don't need to worry about it, you know? It's, it's terrible that it's happening there. It's a terrible tragedy for us halfway around the world in China. Not the case, right? Airplanes, there are thousands of them flying in the sky every day. They're moving people from one part of the world to another. Mm -hmm. If a virus starts someplace, it's not going to stay there. And we should have known that too, right? Yeah. But how in connect, interconnected we all are yeah. uh, through our work and our lives, I think that's the thing that this has really brought home. You know, there's no safe place in the world. So we didn't see it coming. No matter how mm. big our economies are, no matter how grand the world leaders are, they just didn't see this. So there was no problem. Yeah, you know, one thing I was thinking about today, you know, the major countries in the world, the US, China, Russia, they have massive, massive militaries. They've got, you know, hundreds of missiles and nuclear warheads yeah, to protect okay. against, against what, you know, but do they have, do they, do they have protective <laughs> equipment for their doctors and nurses? Do they have masks? Yeah. No, they, they, they were arming for the wrong enemy, you well, know? Yeah, the invisible enemy that we can't even yes. You can't see it. I yeah. mean, I'm shopping and I'm wearing a mask and I'm, and I'm like, am I in a movie or is this really real? It's real. <laughs> it's real. Wow. But how do you think we've managed so far in, in terms of dealing with it, in terms of our leaders, in terms of governments dealing with this and taking this on? I mean, I think you've seen the full range of human behavior in terms of our leaders. You know, some leaders have been very responsible and have been able to mobilize industry and, and government and the economy to, to fight COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Others, I mean, I was reading about the Brazil um, leader, uh, Bolsonaro, who seems to still be denying that it's a problem. And I think he's going to put thousands, maybe more lives at risk in his country. Mm -hmm. And some people just don't see it, right? So there's, there's a range, I think. I've been really impressed with some leaders, but, you know, some people let you down. Yes, yes. What and do you home, think? And home in Canada, how's Canada dealing with all of this? I mean, I have to say the thing I've been most impressed by is that leaders who are on opposite sides of the political spectrum are working together on this, mm -hmm. probably for the first time, because they usually spend a lot of time just battling each other and 
you know, finding fault with each other. But um, but this has been something that's bigger than partisan politics. Yeah. Uh, both the left and the right and the, and the center as well in Canada seem to all be working together. The federal government and the different provincial leaders seem to be working together. I think we all acknowledge the scale of the problem. We might have slight differences in terms of the speed with which people act, but I think everybody understands that, that you know, you have to set some of that, that, um, that, uh, you know, parliamentary debate aside and just get things done. Get things done. Because your, your prime minister was affected, wasn't he? I mean, or his wife. Um, his wife contracted the virus in London, actually. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness. And then, and, and that's what I, you know, I said to someone earlier today that the Western world, it's, it's okay to come out and say, I have this illness, or not an illness, I have caught this virus. But mm -hmm. I find that in our part of the world, there's still some sense of stigmatization around mm -hmm. all of these things in terms of coming out and saying yes. I mean, the, the prime minister in, in the UK has had to come yes. out and say it. Yeah. And admitted into hospital yesterday. Um, so these are real realities that, you know, it's touching everyone. There are no boundaries. Um, as I said, you know, coronavirus is not racist. It, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're black or white or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't happen to do those things, it's, it's, it's right there. Um, so yeah, true. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's been good that some of the, you know, more popular figures in entertainment, the arts, politics have come out early and say, I have the coronavirus. So that Boris Johnson did so, that Tom Hanks, that Idris Elba and others just came out right early on and said they have it and they're dealing with it. Yeah. I think that gave a lot of other people just the, the license to say, it's okay, I have it. It's, there's, no, there's no shame that should be attached to it. And, and, they, they've gone home and, and they're, they're fine. They're okay, yeah, yeah. So how are you self-isolating? What are the things you're doing? I mean, this is when we know how important, um, I was saying to my son yesterday, how important the work that we do in this industry is with regards to film and music and poetry and all those things, because that's what everyone's doing at home. They're either reading a book or watching a movie um, or listening to music or, you know, so what, what have you been doing self-isolating? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I'm working a lot, so that's the thing. You know, Tiff, we closed our, our building in Toronto, and so we're having to make alternate plans and, and plan for different scenarios. We're working through all of that. We're planning on our film festival for September still, so that continues. Mm -hmm. When I'm not working, my son is at home, and he has um, sort of a home school that started up a week ago, so he's, uh, he's doing that, and my wife is at home as well. And when we're not busy with those things, we're cooking a lot more together. Uh, we're listening to music. Uh, there's this great DJ in the U.S. in L.A., DJ D. Nice, who has these Instagram uh, dance parties where like a hundred thousand people. Oh wow! You know? wow. Yeah, club quarantine. So those are cool. Uh, we're watching a lot more movies, you mm -hmm. know, which is nice. Um, and I'm able to introduce uh, my son, who's 10 years old, to some new films and, and you know, get his reaction. We're spending a lot more time together as a yeah, family. It's really and a very good, yeah, this is, this yeah. is good, like it's been imposed upon some of us, but it's a good time to bond with the family and catch it up. Is. Uh, when next are you going to have this much time with your loved ones? Probably yeah. never in your life, right? The fact that you're forced to stay together <laughs> with the people you live with for probably weeks on end, that almost never happens. You know, I'm like you, I'm traveling a lot yeah. and you're out of town. You don't get to see the people you care most about. And now you can't in a way forced to, you should really take it as a gift. You Absolutely. Know? It's a real gift. I really believe yeah. it's a real gift. But in all of this, there's obviously going to emerge a new normal in terms of what is the new normal going to be? You know, are we going to sort of just start watching all our films online? Um, are we going to stop going out for dinner? I mean, what are the things that we are going to do? Or how do you, what, what are your views on how you think our lives are going to change mm. based on this new normal? Because most certainly there's going to be change, right? I think there will. I think it's, it's hard to tell exactly what will change. I think in the short term, you know how we got used to bag checks and, and increased security at airports. We're going to get used to temperature checks, right? I think that's going to be a very normal thing now. People will be checking for fevers. Yeah. I hear in Shanghai when they open the restaurants again, to get into a restaurant in Shanghai, you have to have your fever temperature checked. That's probably going to be normal for a while uh, around the world. Um, I think we're going to get used to living more online. You know, I, we're now ordering our groceries online because we don't want to go into a supermarket. Yeah. And, um, and 
that's actually a pretty good experience. You know, you can sit at your laptop or on your phone even and order all of your groceries and someone delivers it a few days later. Yeah. And why wouldn't we keep doing that, you know? And we may watch more online as well. We're getting used to watching new films uh, instantly. You know, some of the studios in Hollywood yes. have started to put them out online right yes. away. Yes, because some of the cinemas are also launching, you know, streaming platforms now. So yes, that's right. do you think we're gonna get to a point of whereby cinemas become irrelevant? No, I don't believe that at all. Maybe I can't afford to, but I truly don't believe it. Mm. Um, you know, we started something at TIFF uh, about a week and a half ago called Stay at Home Cinema in response to this. Our own five cinemas are closed at the TIFF Bell Lightbox. And what we're doing instead is we're working with a Canadian streaming service called Crave. And we're gathering people across the country and saying, you know, on a Wednesday night at seven o'clock, we're all going to watch this movie. It might be The Princess Bride. And we're doing actually um, Ama Asante's film, Bell, coming up. Uh, and we're all going to watch it then. We'll do an Instagram interview. Ama's agreed to, to sit down with us on Instagram live uh, to introduce the movie we all watch it together and we just share our reactions online on Facebook and Twitter and other places and you have to try to kind of bring that social experience of movies into mm -hmm. into an online experience but the thing about movies is that it is social we want to watch them together we want to talk to each other about them so whether it's in a movie theater or online you have to find that that social glue you know that, glue that brings us together but there are mm -hmm. a couple of um festivals that have decided, I, I read somewhere, to launch their festivals online. Do you yes. see TIFF moving in that direction? Or I mean, you still have till September, of course. Um, how do you see that things happening for TIFF going forward? Yeah, we're, I mean, I'm very hopeful that by September we'll be on the other side of this. And while we may have some new, some new measures in terms of social distancing or temperature checks that remain for a while, that we'll be able to gather in person and watch movies at our festival. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some things we're doing online that I like and that we might continue, you know, whether it's the stay at home cinema and, and there might be some version of that where we do some kind of collective viewing of movies online. Uh, the industry side, the buying and selling of movies, more of that is happening online now in terms of virtual markets yeah. no reason why that couldn't happen where we're we've got a movie we're premiering in Toronto and if you're sitting in uh, your office in Lagos or in Shanghai or in uh, Lima Peru where you can see that film and bid on it if you want to buy it for your territory why not you know right. so Absolutely. yeah we could do more of that so it's basically about having the best of both worlds I guess whereby yes. it would be lovely to still come and be there in person but then there's also that alternative. So do you think maybe there could be something whereby you have, let's all meet and let's do the TIFF and have those days, but also mm -hmm. do a virtual TIFF? Do you, do you ever see yeah. that sort of happen? I think it will be more of a hybrid. I don't think we're going to throw yeah. aside the in-person experience altogether. And I, I don't think we're going to throw aside the, the online experience altogether. But I think bringing them together more is probably what we're going to see. And that makes sense. I mean, we have the technology now. I'm so grateful that we have in addition to things like electricity and you know heat in our houses and ref refrigerators all those things that are making life more comfortable as we're isolating that we have wi-fi you know and we have wi-fi that's strong enough that we can we can watch anything from anywhere now it's amazing absolutely absolutely and in all of this you know in terms of the next batch of films being made i'm sure everybody's at home now and I know we as a company, we're doing a lot of development and we have all these ideas about the kind of things we want to see made in the next two or three years. What do you think is going to be happening on our, on our screens in the next two or three years? Is it all going to be about well, the virus? Look, we are definitely going to see a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows about COVID-19 and that experience. There's going to be romances that take place in isolation. There's going to be, you know, thrillers and all different kinds of movies. I mean, some of them will be bad, there's no doubt, but there might be something brilliant that comes out of that as well. Yeah. Uh, you look at like what happened with 9-11 in the US or other terrorist attacks, sometimes great art comes out of great crisis, and I think that's gotta be the case here too. Absolutely, I mean, we have to sort of look at this and say, what's the best that can come out mm. of this? So mm -hmm. we look forward to being a part of that. And as you know, I, I hope so. not that affected by this, and mm -hmm. we have and pray that it remains that way. Yes. Um, we don't know the science behind it, but in terms of the numbers being reported um, and those tested and, and the deaths, the, the numbers are still very low in Africa. Um, yeah, I'm very glad to hear that. Yes, so we'll probably be having some ideas about some feature films around. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps we'll see. Yes. <laughs>
good. Good to catch up with you. Um, yes, you too, Mom. Looking forward really to TIFF 2020. You know, yes, being, excellent. Being there, you know, live and direct. We hope that we can welcome the whole world back to Toronto in September. Yeah. Uh, we hope we're ready to do that safely. And in the meantime, it's really good to talk to you. And all the best to you and your family. Stay Thank safe. You so much, Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. All right. Thank Take you. care. You too. Bye-bye.